Greetings everyone and welcome to today's session. Organizational Resilience, how ISO 22316 provides guidance for your organization. I would like to thank you all for signing up for this webinar. As always, I'm delighted to have you here with us. My name is Delita Rejepi, the Portfolio Marketing Manager for Continental Resilience and Service Management here at PCB. Today, today's presenter will be Dr. Wolfgang Mar. He has over 20 years of experience in consulting and project management in the ICT environment and during the last 20 years has specialized in the field of business continuity management. At the end of the presentation, we have question and answer session. Therefore, please feel free to submit any question or comment you may have during this webinar in the chat box of your control panel. Wolfgang will answer to all your questions accordingly at the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention and I hope you will get insightful information from this webinar. Please Wolfgang, you may start the presentation. Thank you, Erita. Hello, this is Wolfgang Mar, owner and founder of Governance and Continuity. As I have been kindly introduced, I think I don't uh, need to re uh, revert uh, my um, engagement in this um, field. However, I would like to make sure or make clear that I have been involved in standards making uh, for the last uh, six or seven years. Um, I am coming from the BCM field and um, even at that time in the area of 2010, 11, 12, there was a feeling that we need something more than just a BCM standard and that's about the time when uh, in ISO TC223 uh, the idea was um, coming up of creating a standard on organizational resilience. Nobody knew what organizational resilience was at the time and uh, um, it's also a sign that uh, this very young subject of organizational resilience is a complicated one that it actually took exceptionally long for this standard to be uh, created or to be um, developed to a stage where uh, international standards organizations or rather the national standards organizations around the world actually can, can and should vote about it. So it's, um, it's a kind of adventure. Um, nobody really knows what organizational resilience is and um, this broadcast, this webcast is probably a, a help uh, for all, all of us to advance this subject and to try to learn more about it. I have problems with uh, advancing the slides. Sometimes it's not working. Okay, I don't know. I have to go for a backup system. Okay. Um, so, the overview, I would like to give you a short overview of the presentation to help you um, navigate through it. We will discuss on an approach to organizational resilience, how the people involved in this standards body actually worked. The composition of the standard based on principles, attributes and activities, we'll come to that later. And we'll also have a look on the involved management disciplines. There is, um, we will find out that organizational resilience is a complex field and it invol involves many management disciplines and uh, the big challenge actually is that uh, these management disciplines must interact with each other and uh, should not work in, um, in, in uh, separation. But let us uh, work or let us have a look on uh, where we think that um, Organizational resilience is, that's too much, in, in terms of, uh, in relation to, let's say, business continuity. With business continuity, we deal with, as we see in this diagram, with large impacts and fast, sudden events. So, if there's a problem with uh, your IT or with um, a fire, uh, breakdown of a production line, problems with suppliers, 
then we deal with this area, business continuity management, and um, this is a well-established practice actually. It's now uh, four years ago when ISO 22301 was released, the first international uh, system management standard on, on business continuity, uh, on so-called BCMS. Uh, one area or a differentiation to organizational re resilience might be the a view on larger impacts and slow developments um, as compared to other disciplines. Let's directly jump to the fact or to the scenario where we have slow developments and large impacts and actually where ISO 22316 is uh, aiming at. We've also, of course, um, a situation or scenarios with small impacts and fast events for example, um, incident management, and this can be treated with uh, applicable standards. And the last scenario of slow, slow development and small impacts actually um, should be dealt with uh, normal business uh, procedures. Okay, so let's go back to where we came from. Uh, BCM life cycle, we have a fully established system of four phases, understanding the organization, strategy, response, exercising, maintaining, review, and we also have got a uh, system, a, a so-called BCMS, business continuity management system, with um, characteristics of such a system, the four phases, plan, do, check, act, uh, actually a, the basis for continuous, of continual improvement. Uh, we have a system in place, or if there is a system in place, it has to be improved and improved over time. Okay, uh, another view back, or a global view on, on the background information, where did we actually uh, come from? Where is this um, work group? Um, uh, at home, who is working on ISO 22316 on organizational resilience. Actually, it's an ISO technical committee. Uh, the new number, the actual number is uh, TC292, and it's actually called Security and Resilience. And uh, we have got uh, six working groups, two of them actually work with uh, aspects of resilience. Working group two is called continuity and organizational resilience, that's actually where I'm uh, participating. And um, there is also working group five working on community resilience. So this uh, ISO technical committee has embarked on this um, venture uh, in kind of expanding the um, situation of, of um, organizational resilience or finding a home for this new discipline. This um, diagram shows the main deliverables of this technical committee. In the center we have got ISO 22301, which again is based on the classic um, BCM life cycle. There is a uh, guidance document, uh, the 1.3 document, which helps implementing the 01 document. And there are a number of um, standards which have been developed around this uh, life cycle, for example, 1.7 impact analysis, 1.8 uh, supply chain. We have two standards on auditing or validating uh, continuity, business continuity systems, and other uh, working groups in this technical committee have developed other standards, for example, on emergency management and um, community resilience. So our standard or the, the main product or the main approach is actually uh, trying to encompass um, the sphere of BCM. We, we start there but we know that it's uh, much more uh, to, it takes much more to make an organization resilient 
then just uh, working uh, or implementing a PCM uh, and a PCM approach. So the question is, why do we need this uh, organizational resilience stuff at all? Uh, we have found in the um, committee or the working groups that uh, there is a need for an overarching approach. Uh, we found out uh, during and after working on the first uh, business continuity standards that um, something is missing with BCM, we can cover a lot, but it's, it's not enough. So we came up with um, the proposal to enhance the concept, put it that way. We all started from, from BCM and risk management fields. And um, there was the, the trend, there was a trend uh, to uh, describe this new overarching discipline resilience or organizational resilience, but uh, it, uh, it's, it's, it's not well defined yet. It's, uh, we have got a definition, but uh, one can certainly argue about it. It also needs to be said that um, organizational resilience or a precursor for this discipline is certainly intuitively pursued by organizations, but it's um, probably done in an unstructured way. Uh, companies, organizations uh, certainly have the desire to become more resilient. Maybe they don't even call it that way. They want to be immune to crisis, they want to grow, they want to become immune to, to crisis or uh, they want to quick, more quickly recover from crisis, they want to be innovative and look ahead and uh, be, um, uh, be a, a growing organism, a growing, a growing organization uh, which um, is stronger than the competitors. I think that is uh, one of the um, reasons for every organization. And all these uh, properties certainly are, are tied to what can be called uh, organization resilience. So um, it's not a completely new thing that somebody invented uh, out of uh, thin air, but it has very much to do with uh, how organiza organizations operate. And uh, if we um, use this concept of resilience, of course, as we have seen with the overview of uh, TC292, there is also a, a concept of community resilience. Uh, a city, a province, a country should uh, also be resilient, uh, although we no longer can call it organizational resilience, of course, but uh, protecting critical infrastructure, uh, having a robust, um, let's say, transportation system, being resilient against uh, supply chain interruptions for uh, energy, for oil, gas, whatever, is certainly also a goal which is to be pursued by organizations and by, let's say, public organizations like cities, um, provinces or, or even countries. Okay, so I spoke of a definition. Uh, it's um, a very simple definition which um, was developed by um, members of this technical committee. Maybe the main term is we are dealing with an ability, ability of an organization, so it's not a capability, it's not a property, it's not uh, a state, but it's ability, probably also a term which uh, can be translated into other languages, which is always a challenge in uh, standards making. So it's an ability to absorb and adapt. So if there is a change to the normal operation of an organization, then the organization should be in a position to absorb these uh, challenges and uh, probably in a way uh, that it's not destructive. So the organization should be able to adapt to this um, new situation 
and uh, that's a bit missing for me. And of course, um, if possible, the, uh, the organization should bounce back and come back to a um, state or to a, a configuration uh, resembling the one before the impact or before the, the the challenge, you know. So it's resilience is not if your company is decimated to 50% of uh, turnover because of an external problem that you stay at that at that, at that level. But um, the idea is actually that uh, the organization bounces back, uh, bounces back, and and uh, recovers fully. Uh, the challenge is, of course, that uh, the environment um, is changing, and uh, the environment, uh, we come to that later, we talk about the external and internal environment, um, is not a given uh, fact, a given constant, but it uh, will vary, and uh, sometimes this is actually the, the trigger for the necess necessity to uh, create uh, or to to uh, become more resilient. If an environment would be stable and uh, the world would be no changes, then of course um, we don't need um, resilience. Then everything will run tomorrow as it runs today, and uh, there is there is actually no development neither. To, uh, to 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 the negative side, uh, there won't be any problems or um, disruptions or um, challenges to the organization, but there would also be no opportunities and no potential for growth. So, a diverse or a changing environment is uh, is a matter of fact, and uh, resilience uh, has to has to deal with it. Okay, um, as I explained earlier in a bit more detail, we are featuring a three-level approach. We base everything on principles, uh, principles which should help enhance the, an organization's resilience. So it's a way of thinking, a way of organizing um, an organization. Uh, if these uh, principles uh, are well thought out and uh, serve this specific purpose or purposes, then it makes sense that the organization also processes or contains certain attributes. Um, attributes which help the principles to be adopted or to implement it. And while this uh, might look a bit theoretical, uh, the um, most active or more, most visible things probably are the activities uh, which uh, the organization should um, start and maintain and improve in order to um, come closer to the goal of organizational resilience. So it's a three-way, uh, three-dimensional approach, uh, an approach with uh, three concepts. Um, we have the principles. On top of the principles, we build attributes, and the attributes are then characterized and um, supported by concrete activities. So let's come back to the uh, principles deeply. It's, it's maybe a bit uh, theoretical and it's not uh, uh, revolutionary. So um, the organization should uh, exhibit certain behaviors um, contributing to organizational resilience. So if everyone or every department is working in its uh, own silo or maybe if uh, certain parts of the organization work against each other or are, are competing, then this probably will not uh, serve um, the long-term goal of becoming more resilient. There will be fighting and uh, um, different priorities for different parts of the organization, and this is certainly not, um, not, not helpful. A main factor 
already well known from the BCM service understanding context of the organization, and this is an extension of what we have um, seen or what we see in BCM. It's not just uh, the, the context of, let's say, my suppliers or my customers or my neighbors, but it, it's far more, uh, far more outreaching. Uh, we have to monitor, um, let's say, things like uh, currency ex exchange fluctuations, um, labor actions, political situations in different countries, uh, competitors, whatever. So the context for organization resilience it is even much more complex than for BCM. Okay, then we have put in the standard good governance and uh, governance management. That's the um, no brainer. Just a reminder that um, organizational resilience needs this uh, type of uh, principle to be followed. To be followed, and certainly again, um, maybe an extension of the way of thinking from the BCM field is diversity of skills. Um, again, with uh, organizational resilience, um, many more skills are needed to have a look and to observe what's going on to prepare the organization, to make it more resilient, to make it more responsive. So um, as we will see further down the line, talking about management disciplines, the diversity of skills is uh, important. So if I have uh, a monoculture of uh, small band uh, with skills, all specialists looking at their own uh, field of expertise and nobody has a 360 degree view, this uh, will not be helpful for organizational resilience. So, um, all of this may look like to be um, uh, middle of the road and, and uh, can be taken from a um, organizational management handbook, it's, it underlines that uh, in practice uh, we have seen uh, problems in these areas and uh, that's the reason why it was put in the standard to underline the importance of these uh, principles. Then of course we already touched that coordination across management disciplines, so it, it's coordination rather and uh, synergies uh, instead of uh, silos and, and competition. Last but not least, uh, it uh, has also um, the way to organizational resilience is uh, also importantly managed by managing risk. Um, without uh, this discipline or without um, having a an overview of the risk landscape, uh, we again miss the point of um, looking at the whole external and internal environment and, and the, the changes in these environments and we then might be surprised one day by a threat or by a situation uh, which was simply not monitored. So the bottom line is we need to develop a so-called coordinated approach. Okay, let me briefly touch uh, in, in um, two uh, um, slides, or just one slide, uh, attributes or main attributes for an organization on its way to organizational resilience. Um, again, it's not uh, revolutionary, not uh, spectacular, so let me pick uh, two or three levels, uh, or two or three uh, attributes. Again, also, on the attributes level, understanding the context of the organization is important. Um, we have to make available appropriate resource levels. Again, that's a, um, a feature or a problem already known in management systems implementation. So, just a writing an organizational resilience policy, uh, not um, supporting this policy with appropriate resource level so that it's just a lip service by top management will not put an organization on, on the right path. Again, also we have uh, the principle 
underlined again and again a continual improvement. Um, if an organization thinks they are resilient right now, maybe six months, twelve months, uh, twelve months down the road, um, uh, probably their relative level of resilience uh, will have reduced, and um, uh, the, um, the efforts are in vain. So actually, maybe if we also look at the last point, anticipating change, uh, we have to continue to be on the lookout. Continue to be on the lookout to um, see these changes coming and properly address these changes. So now let us uh, come to maybe the the clearest and uh, sharpest um, proposals or guidance uh, hints for organizational resilience, setting up and pursuing certain activities. For example, empowering staff is uh, certainly very much important because um, if everyone is just receiving um, orders and does not think ahead and does not question any order and has no um, fantasy or has no creativity or no desire to improve processes or become more resilient as, as a group or as a, as a department, then the, the, pro, uh, the process will, will stall and will not proceed. So um, empowerment is quite important. Uh, we also have to review the organizational culture. This uh, again is um, con con connected to the fact that if uh, the organizational culture, the, the organization is frozen or is um, passive, then um, there will be great problems on the way to organization resilience. Information certainly is a critical resource. Um, again, it, uh, this has uh, to do with information uh, distribution, information diffusion. If informations are, are kept back or are not transmitted or uh, are not published, if they are deserved or designed to be published, if uh, communication is not um, well established, then again this is uh, a drawback and hinders certain, uh, hinders the organization uh, on its way to organizational resilience. The last point on the list uh, is again a uh, um, leftover maybe from uh, business continuity diversification, replication, um, so again in organization resilience uh, systems or approaches or solutions which are not redundant and which are, uh, which contain so-called single point of failures is, uh, is a critical situation. So. Um, maybe we can not find an easy example for replication redundancy for having a lookout on market trends in certain overseas markets or uh, looking at the competition, but um, getting information from, from more than one source is certainly helpful and is certainly important in a sense that we get uh, a better overview of of the environment and the challenges and the maybe also of of chances to improve products uh, services and to be more yet uh, more innovative innovative and creative so diversification also just on the level of uh, products uh, or product lines is a helpful activity to obtain organizational resilience. So if um, I'm producing the, the same product um, and I think it's so nice and so fine that nobody uh, can come up uh, and, and um, copy it or even produce a better product, then the company might be in danger because of um, different um, changing market demands and uh, all of a sudden, there is a problem with uh, with sales, and um, if the products are no longer accepted by the customers. Then 
this uh, probably will turn out into a problem and uh, the, the organization is then no longer resilient but will probably struggle. Okay, other activities to be pursued. Uh, we have to make sure that all necessary management disciplines are identified. We'll come to that later. And um, they have to contribute uh, separately and together to organization resilience. So the bottom message may be, the overriding message is it's uh, achieving uh, organizational resilience is a multi-pronged approach and it's uh, not, um, not a single discipline but depending on the industry or the, the type of the organization uh, requires different and um, in most cases uh, a, a great number of these management disciplines to be really protected against um, yeah, changes in the environment, which means uh, competition, political situation, energy prices, whatever you name it. Uh, currency fluctuations, maybe we have a, um, an example that's uh, Brexit. In June, um, the majority of the voters in the UK said, okay, we want to leave, but uh, we don't know how this will work out and uh, for a company in the UK or for a company outside the UK, in the US or in Asia or in Europe, uh, they have to make up their minds and find out what to do with this new situation. Um, maybe they have um, lived um, commercially fine for the last couple of months but nobody knows about um, new regulations, about workforce, uh, taxes, um, the future of the pound, etc. So many um, factors need to be observed in this changing environment. Okay, if you have identified the management disciplines, we of course have to, to coordinate them. And again, um, we have to establish a culture of continual improvement. Um, staying in place actually means uh, sliding back and this increases the chance of uh, serious impact to the organization. This certainly helps. It certainly helps if we um, have a look at the at potential drivers of change. This is really horizon scanning. Um, as I said, um, organizational resilience is not um, only about uh, quick developments, but uh, uh, anything which might develop into a major threat uh, one, two, three, five years down the road is uh, has to be observed and have to be has to be um, checked and um, chances and and uh, threats opportunities be be evaluated. Maybe the bottom line here is on this slide adapt before external factors force the organization to do so. So um, try to avoid a reactive mode and um, be ahead of change and make the best out of, of uh, changed uh, situations, or changed environments, internally and, ex and externally. Further activities, um, it's also a no-brainer, individual goals to be aligned with the organization's goals. It's a reminder, it has to be that way, again, individuals and uh, groups of individuals, departments or uh, divisions have to work in, in harmony, in, in synergy, not against uh, each other. Clarity about the organization's purpose, of course. Um, first of all, everyone has to be clear about the organization's purpose, which is a challenge maybe with larger organizations. And um, especially for top management, it's the issue of um, changes to this organization's purpose uh, because maybe due to drivers, um, or to, uh, due to signs on the horizon, this, um, the purpose has to be changed uh, and um, 
maybe or what are the current trends, maybe electric vehicles or driverless vehicles, so all uh, those uh, huge um, car manufacturing companies of today have to look up um, look after their their purpose. Will they want to continue with uh, the cars they produce today and just add a new engine or a new type of uh, headlights, whatever? Or will the market change in the next 15 years? And um, who will go? Who will be uh, the the future players? This uh, links to the next. Um, activity, follow-up, scan, follow-up and um, react to innovative ideas or implement innovative ideas, think beyond what's possible today, um, be a visionary maybe, uh, just um, avoid just uh, to, to um, run the organization with the review in mind because um, nobody knows what the future will will be. The future will, will come and will probably different than what's expected and um, one has to adapt ahead of um, the, the effect. Again, maybe a rem remnant from uh, the BCM a world, strong relation to the organization's interested parties, customers, public, media, again, maybe even on a more um, sophisticated level than with just BCM, um, relations on different areas, different media, with different interested parties uh, to gain, again, a 360 view and to act on what might slowly uh, creeping, up, creeping up from the horizon. Uh, last but not least, maybe um, organize the responsibilities and roles and responsibilities in a way that uh, helps and fosters organizational resilience. Again, um, that's maybe an extension of the, the BCM manager <laughs> in business continuity, probably we need a, a resilience manager or whatever, or a team to uh, help contributing to, to this goal. If we talk about uh, contributions again, this is um, the proposals laid down in this guidance document. Uh, that's a continuous uh, feedback or the continuous determination if strategies and objectives are in line, they are still in line with, um, with the future goals, Does do these uh, strategies and objectives enhance re resilience, do they take resilience actually um, into account, uh, are they written in order to enhance resilience, do people leave, do staff leave? live up uh, to um, these strategies to enhance resilience or not? Is there probably room of improvement? Contributing factors, I think we, we spoke about it. It's the issue of uh, what actually um, directly helps in fostering organizational resilience. Um, we have to pick the, the, the strong contrib contributing factors, maybe there are what's called the low-hanging fruits, uh, where can we get most uh, of, uh, from, from our um, budget, from our resources, what are the contributing factors? Of course, if we are already on the path to organization resilience, we have to continuously check um, the effectiveness, so it's not a, um, a booklet or a binder or a policy which makes uh, the makes an organization resilient, but um, the organization has to follow a certain approach and it has to be determined if this approach is uh, really effective. This goes hand in hand with uh, monitoring the maturity or obtaining a measurements on um, organization resilience, although this appears to be very complicated um, as per today. And um, finally, last not least, uh, the uh, classic 
basic uh, gap analysis to find out what uh, what's really missing. So, for example, as we already spoke about, uh, missing um, awareness of the environment or missing awareness of uh, or missing communication concepts, maybe even a whole business continuity approach is missing. These are uh, gaps to be determined to add another pillar uh, supporting um, our approach to organizational resilience. If we already have gone a certain way, a certain distance towards organizational resilience, then we have to look back and uh, do a review and find out, okay, what about the organization's objectives? Uh, are they in line what we are doing or are we doing in, uh, in line of the organization's objectives? Are there changes in the business model? Do we have to change the business model? Uh, can we uh, proceed with what we do today? Um, one example maybe is uh, the Kodak company who for maybe 120 years was uh, the world leader or one of the world leaders in photographic equipment and, um, and films and um, their business model actually was wiped out by the coming of uh, electronic cameras and um, although there was no threat, no fire, no explosion, no whatever to Kodak, they went out of business or maybe they were, uh, are now a very small uh, company uh, because the business model was, uh, was not right for the time and it was replaced by another approach. Again, um, completely um, marketing or sales oriented uh, facts and figures like uh, new markets, new territories, competition. Um, it has to do something with the business model of course. Uh, can we go to new markets? Is there are new, uh, new competitors on the horizon? Um, are we resilient enough to take on uh, with them? Uh, do we, can we is it worthwhile to move our organization into a new territories or not? So um, a marketing-oriented approach uh, is, is also, has also be, to be followed, which has a lot to do with uh, the next point, to, to monitor the product and services lifecycle. If um, my products are outdated or my services are uh, no longer in, um, in uh, need, by my customers because there was something else or something different, then I have to look at, uh, at the situation and, and to probably launch uh, new products or think, uh, think about the changes in the business model. Uh, then, uh, of course, we have um, staff changes. It's a, it's a fact if uh, key resources uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, quantities or qualities leave my organization, then we certainly will have a problem. So it's maybe also a, a um, competition for uh, looking or searching for the best heads or if people are just uh, fed up with my organization because um, it's boring or the uh, market is collapsing and um, there's bad management, then people may uh, move on to, to other employers and uh, every change or every staff change is, is of course a problem and uh, might uh, cost a lot of money. And of course, uh, managing uh, risk is important. Uh, that's uh, kind of overarching uh, radar which has to run uh, in order to really uh, um, scan the horizon and try to find out what uh, uh, might come up in, in terms of, of risks, but it's also opportunity, opportunity management. Okay, let's uh, conclude with um, sample management disciplines as laid down in the, in the standard. There are a number of management disciplines listed in the annex of the document and it is uh, just a reminder uh, of the fact that uh, organizational resilience is a very 
multifaceted approach. Um, let's take the second line, business continuity management. It's listed here as one of uh, a management discipline, including crisis management. We know that uh, BCM itself is a multifaceted and um, uh, if properly done, will um, affect the whole of the organization. But this, uh, again, is just one aspect. So you can do um, very highly developed uh, business, continuity, business continuity management. Uh, but uh, if you forget about most or all of the other management disciplines, you will not be become resilient or more resilient in certain sense, yes, but um, if you, for example, forget about uh, or neglect communications management or fraud control, environmental management, uh, then um, your approach is, uh, is probably too weak. So out of this list of these management disciplines, and the list continues on, on the next slide, um, you have to pick what you think, what you know is missing or needs to be improved. Uh, for example, if um, information security management, which is um, one discipline in or out of these uh, 12 or 15 is missing uh, and you neglect this discipline, you'll probably uh, be uh, very vulnerable to attacks by, by cyber attackers or, or hackers and um, then everything might be in place but um, you as a company are, are dead at least for a couple of days and if it's uh, quite important that you are uh, online all the time, then it might actually be a big, um, a big uh, impact to you. Well, let's take physical security management, uh, quality management, um, and uh, there is a reason why there are three dots here. So it's not the list is not exhaustive. It should give you an indication on what you um, actually should think, but um, just as a starters, a starting point. Um, depending on your on your type of organization, there might be other uh, management disciplines. For example, if you are in engineering and you do uh, construction of tunnels or bridges or skyscrapers, then you probably also need to know about the latest development in material technology. Um, if you are in, in banking, uh, then certainly you have to be 100% sure about uh, compliance issues and so on and so on. So this is just an eye-opener, this um, section on management disciplines on what might be important or what might um, really contribute to becoming a more resilient organization. So as a um, to wrap up, I would say the critical success factors are, and I try to underline that um, several times uh, we are uh, facing a holistic approach. It's not that, let's say, one person uh, can be declared uh, to you are the resilience manager and <laughs> everything is then to be done by this uh, poor, poor single person. No, it's, it's a team approach. Uh, like we know it from uh, business continuity, but even more diverse because um, I would like to recall that the BCM is uh, rather for uh, quick events, for things which happen in no time, but uh, resilience actually is uh, interdisciplinary and also has to take into account very slowly developing situations which in the long run might affect you uh, heavily, but um, it's, it's um, for example, not part of uh, uh, business continuity or, or cyber security. So it's inter interdisciplinary, it certainly needs full management commitment, it 
cannot be delegated to a, a group and management can um, disconnect from this group. Actually, similar to BCM, I think every every staff member needs to be involved in a certain degree. Um, the, the staff are the, the eyes and ears of the organization and um, if something um, develops, maybe as a rumor or a slight uh, low signal on the horizon, uh, one other staff member may, may, may pick it up and uh, they may uh, contribute um, very effectively to upcoming uh, trends and, and, and challenges. I like the term 360 monitoring, uh, maybe not uh, looking in, in the past, but uh, rather geographically, you need to know what's happening around you. It's the issue of um, the external environment and um, environmental changes might be quite slowly and uh, if you say, okay, well, it's no problem if, um, uh, let's say, the temperature rises uh, one or two degrees in the next uh, 10 or 20 years, maybe it will have a, a big effect on your customers, on your organization, on your uh, production facilities, whatever, so it, it needs to be um, monitored all the time and not, uh, not just, let's say, with uh, two, three sensors, but um, probably many more of them. And um, finally, as organizations are still organized according to management disciplines and to uh, certain groups or departments. Uh, we have to make sure that all of them are involved, all of them which are necessary are involved and uh, we need to um, also make sure that we fully interact and, and uh, coordinate these activities, otherwise it's, it's a problem with, um, with uh, competition and uh, lack of coordination. Okay, I think this uh, was uh, the presentation as I um, designed it. It was a walk, th walk through through the standard, but um, I tried to bring in um, practical examples and um, links to, to real organizations to really help you get started in organization resilience. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Wolfgang, for Any this questions? excellent Any presentation. Thank you, Wolfgang, for this excellent presentation. Because of the time My limitation, pleasure. we will only take the first questions, and uh, the remaining yep. question will be answered through email. Pleasure, yeah. The first question was, does this standard can be implemented in some organization instead of the 22,301? Yes, so certainly. Okay, uh, if you say the standard to be implemented, um, uh, as I said, it's a guidance document. So it's no certification, it's no, uh, not a document saying you shall do this and shall do that, it's all should. So it's, um, it's a, a list of proposals that you get but um, you may still call it implementation. I just wanted to make sure that it's not, um, nobody thinks it's a systems management standard. Mm, yes, you may certainly implement uh, the ideas to follow the guidelines of uh, this standard, but as we have seen in the management disciplines, I think um, if you, let's say, completely ignore the BCM and not implement 22301, this one pillar will um, uh, not be here and uh, you will not be protected against um, business interruptions uh, as this is the discipline of uh, BCM. But uh, if the question is, uh, can we start with uh, working with this standard before implementing business continuity management, uh, the answer is yes, but at uh, some point you will uh, have to ask yourself, uh, is, um, what about BCM? Are we 
managing crisis? Are we prepared against, let's say, um, power cuts or IT outages or what about a flood or an earthquake? Uh, this actually um, still contribute to organizational resilience, yeah? Interesting question, thanks. Thank you for this answer. Once again, I would like to thank you for this informative presentation. And I would like to thank all the attendees as well who have joined us today. We hope you enjoyed this webinar. Please be informed that this webinar is recorded and we will upload it in our official YouTube channel and in our website pcb.com. I wish you all a good day and I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye.